Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at modeling baseboard trim and crown molding. So we've done things like this before, and it actually occurred to me I've modeled and used Follow Me to put baseboard in, but it's always a simple rectangle. What I want to look at today is making kind of an accurate profile for baseboard and crown molding, and then using Follow Me to throw it into a room. Let's hop in. All right, so I have a very simple room. It's a, a box, uh, but what I want to do is I want to create a profile that looks like, you know, real baseboard and have it follow around these three sides. So follow me is going to happen. It's going to be simple. The big part is going to be getting that accurate profile. To do that, we're going to import a couple of images. I'm going to go to import and I have two images. I have one called crown molding, one called baseboard. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and import them. Use as image is turned on. That's very important. I'm going to say import, and I'm just going to click twice to place it. I don't care about the scale. I actually want it kind of big. So I'm going to grab both right now before we do anything else. And go ahead and grab that crown molding image too. Both of these images were just pulled down off of a hardware store website. So th there's no insider information. These aren't special things pulled from anywhere in particular. Uh, pretty simple, pretty basic. Uh, I've found that if you just go to any websites, any of these pieces they have, one of the images they have is this 2D drawing of the profile. Uh, very important. I'd imagine you can get these from uh, sites that create this, the materials as well. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to go in and create groups of these profiles. So I want to create a line drawing, a, a, actually a face that looks just like this piece right here. I'm going to start that with a rectangle. Um, again, I'm not concerned about scale. I'll come back and scale this back down afterwards. Right now, though, I just want to get an outline of what this is going to look like. Uh, like that. All right. And obviously, I got an issue here because my rectangle I just drew covered up the face that I'm trying to trace. So what I can do is I can go to view, I can go to face style and turn on x-ray. Turning on x-ray lets me still draw on top of this face right here, but lets me see through it to the other side. Now, one thing I want to point out, this little cut right here, I know this is a part of the actual profile of this material, but for me, it really doesn't do anything. This face is going to be flush up against the inside of the wall. I'll never see it. In my final model, it'll never be there. So it's a bunch of extra geometry that I could create, but it's just going to weigh my model down. So I'm going to skip it. I'm going to focus instead on getting this little, little section right here. I'm going to draw a line out like that. I'm going to draw a little line straight down here, just represent where that is. And there's a couple ways to put this curve in. I could actually come in and use like Bezier. I could click these two points and then pull handles out to try to match that curve. But just to keep it simple, I'm going to grab a two point arc, click here. I'm going to click right about in the middle and pull that arc over something like that. And then I'll grab another arc from this end to this end, let it snap tangent. And there we go. So if I do that, that is now the profile of that piece. So you can saw super quick, super easy. Uh, last step is to scale it. To do that, I'm going to double click, make it a group. Then I'm going to go into the group and grab tape measure and say here to here is 3.5 inches. Enter. Do I want to resize the group? Yes. All right, there we go. That's one piece. I'm going to go ahead, grab that group. I'm going to stand it up and I'm just going to go, I'm going to set it over here for use in a second. All right, we're going to come back and, and do the follow me after we finish both profiles. So profile number two, uh, same thing here. I'm going to stay in x-ray and I'm going to start by drawing a line across like this. And then I will draw a line down here. And then I will draw a vertical line. I'm not really concerned about this, this right here. I don't really care what angle this is. Um, I'm assuming it's around 45 degrees. The knowing that when I drew this line in, it was on the red axis and this line in, it's on the green axis means that this profile, when I put it in, will tuck right into that corner. I don't care if what, what this angle is right here, to be honest. All right, so I'm going to come across and just start drawing some lines. Straight lines are the easiest ones, of course. And then as soon as I get done with straight lines, this is where I want to jump in with my arc. So this is another spot where you could, depending on, on you know what you're most comfortable with, if you want to try using the Bezier command, that might be a quicker way to come put these arcs in. It also might be a little bit more accurate. Uh, obviously, 
the arcs that I get out of uh, arc are limited to, you know, kind of following that section of a circle. And I'm not going to have like uneven arcs like this. See, it's not, it's not really following that exactly how I want it to. Um, that can be a little bit easier with Bezier. Your call though. I mean, you can, you can use that. You can just use arcs, um, whatever you're most comfortable with. I don't want you to be uncomfortable. I want you to be happy. All right. Uh, a couple more arcs here just to draw this, finish this up. It looks like this is, I'm going to draw this as straight lines. I don't like the idea of that being squishy like that. I, I, I want, I want, that's what I want. Okay. No, I got to come knock that corner off. It looks, it looks too wrong. All right. So there we go. So I created my profile there. I'm going to double click. I'm going to make it a group. I'm going to come in here. And now from here to here is three one eighth inch. Oh, I had the wrong. I forgot to hit my, I have my modifier key on there. Turn that off. Here to here, three one eighth inch. Do I want to scale a group? Yes, I do. So there we go. I have a dimension or a, a, a line in there, a guide in there from when I had that. I forgot to hit the modifier key. All right, let's take that. Let's stand that up too. Go ahead and turn it up like that. And then we'll bring that right over here. All right, to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and go uh, get rid of my x-ray. So I'm going to go to view, face style, turn x-ray off. All right, and I can grab this. I'm going to put it where it goes. It's going to start right there. This guy right here is going to be a little more work to move because I don't, actually, no, it's not. I can grab it right by the corner and I can just drop that right there. All right, one thing I do want to look at. So before I do these follow me's, I'm going to do some quick welding. If I come in here, if I, so if I push pull this right now, see this line that happens here and here, that's because these arcs are broken. To get that so that doesn't show up, I'm going to grab one, two, three edges right there, right click and say weld. Now, as I extend this, see, I get that nice smooth curve right there. Awesome. That's what I wanted to do. I'm going to leave it in the group. I'm going to select the three lines I want to follow. I'm holding down shift, select all three tools, follow me. And I can't click on this group because it, it isn't a group. I can only click on a face. But if I right click, I can say edit group and then click on it. I'm still in follow me right now. So clicking here does the follow me. I can close out of it. And by keeping it in the group, this geometry is separate from my wall and floor group. So there we go. I got that piece done. All right, let's do the top. Let's do the crown. Same thing here. First thing I'm going to want to do is double click. And this has a lot of curves that I want to keep separate. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to double click to get everything. And then I'm going to turn shift on and I'm going to turn off the stuff I don't want. So these are the lines I don't want to weld. Everything else, all these curves I want to weld. So having them selected, say weld edges, and I can always test. I don't have to do a follow me. I can just do a quick push pull and go, okay, yeah, that's the right amount of breaks. Everything else is smooth. Awesome. Exit back out, line one, line two, oops, line three, it's selected, tools, follow me, and then again, like I was saying before, right click, edit group, click on the face, and there we go, look at that, crown molding up top, baseboard down below, accurate profiles, this isn't, uh, this is not just, uh, you know, representation of what it looks like. This is actually what the profile of the product actually looks like. So there we go. Got some accurate details in there. Uh, just a couple minutes using images pulled right off of a hardware store website. So hopefully that's of help to you. Uh, it only takes a couple of minutes. The nice thing is once I create that profile, I can actually save that. So I could make it a component, save it into a template. I could keep it as a group and, you know, uh, copy it into another file that I pull from or make it a component, save it locally. If you do make it a component, you're going to want to be careful to make sure that you make it unique or explode it and put it back in a group before you do the follow me. Because if I use this same baseboard in five or six rooms in my house, the run of it is going to be different each room. And I don't want to have, you know, follow me once and then have every instance that I put in of that component 
following the first room, it's probably not going to match the second, third room. So just something to think about. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week around here and you'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please do leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of this video or some ideas you might have for other videos. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.